What makes a bike shop last for 90 years? How was Avocet started? Did Le Mans really begin his career in a Palo Alto bike shop jersey? Jeff Seltzer fills in the gaps of this inspiring American story. Uh, my name is Jeff Seltzer. I'm the uh, general manager at Palo Alto Bicycles and have been for, this marks my 20th year. Is it the same family who's owned the company or their bike shop for this whole time? 90 years, 90 next years. year. Yeah, that's a- Grandfather started it. The two sons took it over. Um, their kids then took it over from them, and I technically work for the grandsons of the founders. Maybe we can talk about uh, Avocet a little bit in history with the shop. Sure. So Avocet grew um, out of our mail order catalog. So the the, uh, first few years of mail order catalog, essentially all they did was bring in like I said, the, the European imports that nobody else around here was carrying, Campy and uh, uh, the such. So they started talking to some of the manufacturers when they'd go over and do their buying junkets in Europe. They'd talk to them about uh, branding uh, um, a product that they could sell under the Palo Alto uh, catalog. They didn't want to brand it Palo Alto Bicycles because that's hard to get on something, right? Yeah, it's a lot of words and it yeah. takes up a lot of space. So if you're doing a headset, you know, yeah. how do you brand Palo Alto bicycles all the way around the headset? Not easy to do. So they, they wanted to come up with a, 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 a secondary brand. The brothers that own the shop now, you know, they're in their 70s, you know, growing up as kids, they lived in this area. And they used to go over to the Baylands and ride bikes and, and just, what you did when when you were a kid around here and there's a bird that if you sit out there you can watch these things and they just look like they're going a million miles an hour because they're about an inch and a half off the water they're these little tiny birds the wings kind of you know back behind them and they're called avocets um so they looked at that and said you know that's that, that's sleek. That's what a cyclist wants. They want, they want that aerodynamic super speed. You know, that, this really invokes the image that we're looking for. They started making pedals, bottom brackets, hubs, uh, headsets. Uh, they did tires, saddles. Once they started um, doing the saddles and the tires, uh, they opened a whole new market where back in the day, most of the bike manufacturers, Trex, uh, Specialized, um, Richie's, uh, you know, anybody that had uh, a bike line, uh, they didn't have their own tires, their own saddles, their own seat pub. They didn't do a lot of that stuff. So they would get aftermarket stuff to come in. And the cooler names are what added value to the frames and they sold better. Once they came out with a cyclometer, it was a worldwide phenomenon. Um, One of the things that made that so successful um, was uh, in the early days, uh, CatEye was coming out about the same time as Avocet was, and Avocet looked at how things, you know, how bike distances and that type of thing had been counted in the past and prior to cyclometers they had those little uh, uh, things that you put on your spoke and every time the wheel came around it ticked it off it ticked it off and then you'd take that number and you would do a quick calculation and that'd tell you how far you went that day right well they looked at that and said you know you're getting a lot of lost information in here it, it's it's nebulous right it, it, how can we shorten that so if you looked at the way Avocet created their their uh, magnet reading system, it was a little donut that popped onto the the hub, and it had I don't know maybe 20 magnets. So there was just there it was a circular thing that had little segments of magnets all the way around. So you could go less than an inch and it would pick up from one magnet to there'd be a delta between those two magnets Mm -hmm. and it'd give you that level of accuracy as far as the distance it was a much more it was a clean and and much more efficient way to track 
speed. What about um, just <clears throat> Lamont, Greg Lamont and his yeah, role? Become involved. Yep. And, uh, and his, I guess, you know, before that, he was an amateur with wore an Avocet jersey. You bet. So. Actually, before the Avocet jersey, he wore a Palo Alto bicycle jersey. So, so here's the, 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 he both helped launch Avocet, but um, prior to that, he pretty much credits the brothers with help launching his cycling career. Um, as a junior, young 16, 17-year-old kid, he was training to be an Olympic skier. And so the winters, he would spend up in Reno and, and skiing. In the summers, he'd come down to the Bay Area and do the races around here because it was great cross training. You know, real good for the legs, kept his legs in shape, real good cardiovascular. So it was just a way that he was doing it simply to augment his training on the, on the slopes. Well, the brothers uh, saw him race a number of races, and they said, you, you got to go to Europe. It, 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 you would kill it over in Europe. You're, you're at their level. And he was in, Greg was in, I don't know, this maybe eight, ten years ago now, and I was having a conversation with him, and he said, you know, he said I couldn't afford to get over there. He said, I, I would totally have done it. He said I couldn't afford to get over there. And he said... The brothers uh, sponsored him for a year or two, and he said he was able to buy a car. Um, he sold that car, used that money to go over to Europe, and raced for a year over in Europe. Uh, he said he came back from that, put the skis up, and never looked back. And he said so for that reason, he pretty much credits the, the two brothers that now own the shop and this shop with launching his cycling career. Once he got into the Pro Peloton, he used the Avocet cyclometer. And one of the, the best marketing, there's two uh, uh, marketing pieces that Avocet came out with. There's one where it shows, you know, eight or ten guys across, you know, the pe Peloton's behind, yeah, eight or ten guys across the road, you know, who knows in there. Um, uh, Kipuchi was in, you know, all the guys of that era, right? They were all riding across the front. Almost every one of them had a different colored Avocet cyclometer on their bike. That is a money shot if they're ever, and all different teams. It wasn't like just one team that they were all riding it. All these different teams, all these different riders were using this because they saw the value in understanding how fast, how far they've gone, what they've done, all of that. Are there any other customers from the world of entrepreneurship or tech who come through your shop that they might be interested in? Um, yes, and I'm not going to tell you. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, you know, my experience of that caliber of individual, you know, CEO, founder, um, president, whatever. Um, when they come into my shop, they're like kids. Yeah. They're not, you know, these demanding, high-powered, look, I got money, you, I snap my finger. You, they come in and go, tell me about this bike. I'm so excited. I can't wait. You know, they're... It, it's a place where they get to be a human being and not the persona of the CEO, the president, the founder that they are. Um, I value that. The, the, the ability to give someone like that. I mean, world leaders would love to have access to the people that I know. Um, would you I, say that to the average person, Greg Lamont might not be your most famous customer? Oh, definitely not. Yeah, yeah. Definitely not. Um, yeah, it, it, th there is uh, a quality to cycling that, that takes you back to being a little kid. And the ability to be able, I don't care if you're, you know, a working stiff or the, you know, CEO of the biggest corporation in the world. Um, if you get to capture that again for just a moment, 
<laughs> that's part of the reason that shop is still there 90 years later because that's more important to the brothers than owning the world people have asked me why don't you open more shops why don't you have you know you guys you, you know what you're doing you could kill it you know you you need to have a whole chain like mike's bikes or performance or whatever the brothers never wanted to take over the world they didn't they wanted to give their community a little bit of joy and the way they did it was through cycling In a cycling life, there are always lulls in motivation and fitness. Some years hum by with big miles and big milestones, and other months and years, not so much. I'm in the middle of a not so much few weeks. I hike and try to run slowly, more like a linebacker with a bad Achilles than an actual runner. It's easy to put on shoes and get out the door for 30 minutes and run around the neighborhood. Much harder to plan a ride, kit up, and go out for a few hours. Hikes are great for podcast listening and as a break from all things for a few hours, but they aren't bike rides. In the end, though, nothing heals and transforms me like a bike ride. I know there are people smarter than me who write about flow states and cycling as meditation and how the repetitive motion of pedaling combined with a heightened state of awareness does something magical to your brain and soul. It's all true. The gift is in the riding. I know that when I ride my bike more, I'm better at everything. I'm a better dad a better husband, happier and calmer. I think about things in a spiritual way more often. I work more efficiently. I have more ideas and I feel like the world is going to be okay. I sleep better and cook more and vent of meals. I read more. But like all of us, I have periods where I can't seem to get out on my bike consistently. I have zero excuses. I ride bikes for a living. It's part of my job. I can ride anytime during any day and have a reason to do so. The Peloton office is filled with new bikes, products, kits, the latest innovations designed to make riding more enjoyable, and yet I have periods where I just wander around the office, look at everything, then walk to Taco Tuesday at Caso de Lago. Also, the local gym sends us its class schedule. I imagine myself in the front row of a Zumba class. I should also probably learn Tai Chi. The gym has spin classes every hour, every day, and it has a snack bar that serves a great club sandwich with Topa Topa beer on tap. Tennis matches are on the television, and there are swimming goggles on sale at the front desk. There are towels you can borrow. All of it's just a distraction. What I really need to do is get out on a bike for 47 minutes, then ride again the next day, then plan a longer ride on Saturday with Sean and Dave, and then sign up for the Ghent Wimbledon Sportive or another event closer to home. And then the Greek chorus appears. Start riding more. Don't stop. Keep going. In the end, it's what we all need, and it only takes 47 minutes to begin. I'm done speaking this. I'm going on a ride. You should too.